All righty, let's start. Today we are going to start our first video taking a look at TPAC. This will be a two video um, of this module number two. The reason is that next Tuesday, September 3, uh, I will be out of town. And therefore, I've already recorded the second part of this video, which covers the technology integration matrix, the TIM. So today we're going to do TPAC. I'll go over the directions for how to do the assignment. Uh, I'll show you the assignment and um, we'll go from there. So we won't meet again until... By that, I mean we won't meet again synchronously until September the 10th. As I said, I won't be here on the 3rd to do this synchronously, but I've already recorded the class for September 3. So if you want to get this all done, you can. So we're talking today specifically about TPAC. TPAC, TPAC has been around for a while. And I have a really nice video. Hold on a second. I have a really nice video that I will show you just for a little bit. But I'm not going to run the whole thing because, unfortunately, Colab Ultra doesn't understand how to record the audio off of, say, YouTube videos. So let's let's jump in here and let me get you where I want you to be. This is Punya Mishra. He is one of the people who actually developed the concept of TPAC at Michigan State along with, I'm not sure if he was a colleague or a graduate student or what he was. Uh, his name is Matt Kohler. Uh, when you look at the literature, they're both listed together. So I'm going to assume he was a colleague. Here's the video I was going to talk to you about. Um, I'll show it to you just a little bit. Here is an article I'd like you to read uh, that has to do with uh, technology integration, and it speaks very eloquently to TEEP in there. And uh, this is a TPAC designing thing. I can do a better job than this does. Um, and here's a Here's a PowerPoint that I'm going to run here in just a minute. I promise I won't run it all because it's quite long. I just want to make some really important points to you. And then here's five steps to lesson planning with TPAC. This is important. Uh, this is one of the ways that you can decide whether or not what you're looking at um, is following the ideas behind TPAC. This is the link to where our resources are, and I'll show you that. And then this down here, this is the entire um, video that was the beginning of TPAC. And it's about 45 minutes long. It was done at the uh, Society for Instructional Technology Education, and I think it was done in 2008. Right, uh, so, sorry for all that noise. Um, so, you know. It's been around a while. Now, let me, let's see how this sounds and see if I'm going to let it run. It doesn't run for very long. That sounds pretty good. You're a teacher ready to tap students into 21st century learning, but teaching with technology adds a whole new layer of knowledge and expertise. TPAC or technological, pedagogical, content knowledge is a framework that helps teachers consider how their knowledge domains intersect in order to effectively teach and engage students with technology. It's an approach that looks at the combination of what teachers know, how they teach, and the role of technology in order to better impact student learning. So I'm going to stop it because I want to make the point here really clearly to you. He was talking about the role where these all intersect is TPAC. So it doesn't mean that you have to be using technology the entire time. What it means is when you use technology, 
how is it being used to support this and to support that? So, how does TPAC work? First, consider three domains, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. Content knowledge, CK, is the what, your understanding and expertise of the subject area you teach, whether it's science, social studies, math, language arts, or all of the core curricular areas. CK is made up of all the facts, concepts, and theories of any given discipline. Pedagogical knowledge, PK, is the how, your expert knowledge of the art and science of teaching. From learning theories to instructional design, PK includes methods of teaching and assessment, like project-based learning, as well as instructional strategies like Think, Pair, Share. Knowledge of these principles helps you design successful learning experiences for each individual student. Pedagogical content knowledge, or PCK, is the intersection of the pedagogical and content areas. The knowledge you have of how to effectively engage students in learning concepts and skills. This knowledge includes approaches for addressing different learning styles and scaffolding content for deeper understanding. Educational psychologist Lee Shulman saw this intersection as teaching at its best. But several scholars, including Matthew Kohler and Punya Mishra, have added an additional component to 21st century teaching, technological knowledge, or TK. TK represents your knowledge about the tools, including how to select, use, and integrate technology into your curriculum. But it's not just about the devices. It's also the quality of content that students access through apps, websites, and games for learning. By integrating technology into PCK, you now have new insights into and opportunities for student learning. Technological content knowledge, or TCK, refers to how technology is used in a subject area for deep and lasting learning. For instance, to further their understanding of a topic, budding scientists can use sophisticated tools to collect evidence, make observations, and document findings. Interactive software then allows them to see their data represented in various ways. Application of such technologies can help deepen individual students' inquiry within a given discipline. Technological Pedagogical Knowledge, or TPK, is your understanding of how to choose and manage technology for your students. For instance, what technology will best ease your students' workflow throughout their exploration of the scientific method? How can you use collaboration tools to have students share their learning with each other? This knowledge about technology will advance your teaching. The intersection of all three knowledge domains, content, pedagogy, and technology, is the core of TPAC. This center area refers to your understanding of how tools can enhance your teaching and support student learning more deeply and effectively. For example, when learning about water pollution, students could explore 3D models of bacteria's cellular structure and then create their own animated images to analyze local water sources. They then could share their findings virtually with a prominent field expert. This dynamic interplay of all three components is TPAC, the heart of innovative teaching. You okay, I'll stop it right there. Um, I hope that comes through. I, I did a test run earlier today to see how well the uh, the mic would pick it up. And it's, it's pretty good. If it's driving you crazy, I apologize. But if you'll watch this, uh, that really does kind of sum it all up. Now, I'm going to go and start this. And I promise I won't belabor it because it's a fairly long PowerPoint. It's one that I've used for many years, ever since I became, um, I began to understand TPAC. So when you look at TPAC, here's where the guys started. Technology integration is described as a wicked problem. Now, wicked problem is not something cute, a uh, title that the guys came up with. It's an actual uh, social, psych social psychology term uh, that came up, that was come up by C. West Churchman, and here's what it means. It means requirements are incomplete, contradictory, and changing. No two wicked problems are the same. Solutions are difficult to realize. Solutions do not have right or wrong. Solutions do not have stopping rules. And so this is probably the part that has kept TPAC from really catching on uh, because it doesn't have a very solid, here's where you start, here's where you end, it doesn't have a way of, of identifying what are the issues 
And it's why I put Tim in this module, because Tim has very definite guidelines and very definite ways of doing it. But let's keep going. Let me see if I can help you see how this all works today. There's your classic John Dewey quote. You can't have a PowerPoint in education without a John Dewey quote. Um, here's the net standards. We'll just keep going. We already heard about what content knowledge is. It's knowledge about the actual subject. What do you know about what you teach? Um, pedagogy. Let's stop here and rest for a second. Lee Shulman in 1987 wrote the seminal work. He is a uh, University of Louisville Grandmeyer Award winner. His picture is hanging up out there in the hall on the second floor. His ideas were very straightforward. When we think about teacher knowledge, not only do we think about what do teachers know, in other words, what do they know about teaching um, calculus, but what are their pedagogies for teaching that calculus? Are they varied? Do, do teachers employ different pedagogies to help students understand the content in various, through various lenses? So stand and deliver is certainly a pedagogy. And there are times when stand and deliver is a reasonable pedagogy, but it shouldn't be the only one. And we know this. We know there are plenty of people out there who are content experts, but who can't help you understand what the content is worth a lick. It's because they don't understand pedagogy. Now, what Schulman said and wrote about was that he felt that the use of multiple pedagogies, what I call the pedagogical dance, was the true teacher who shows the best teaching methods. And you've seen this. You've seen teachers start out who say, this is what we're going to do today here, the groundwork, et cetera, et cetera. And then they slide or dance over to, now let's get together in the groups that you belong to. And then in the groups, I want you to explore different ways of understanding the particular topic that we're doing. Um, you may use collaboration with outside resources, so on, so on. That's what Shulman wanted to see in what he considered best teaching in 1987. Here's the problem. If there are preconceptions that are misconceptions, this is what uh, Shulman wrote, which they so often are. Teachers need knowledge or stra of strategies most likely to be fruitful in recognizing the understanding, reorganizing the understanding of learners because those learners are unlikely to appear before them as blank slates. Here's what it means. So someone comes into your classroom and they have a misconception or the wrong idea about what you're trying to teach. And what we have to do is we have to acknowledge that because one of the things that Marlene Scardamalia, a dear mentor of mine and, and her partner, Carl Breider have written about is that ideas, knowledge are real. They are artifacts that we all carry around inside our heads. And one of the hardest things to do is to get people to understand that their knowledge or as Shulman says, their preconceptions, could be misconceptions. And it's really, really hard to get those preconceptions changed. It doesn't matter what it's in, and it doesn't matter who it is. Um, you could be the smartest person in the world, but if you have a preconception that's wrong, it's really hard for you to change that preconception. It is one of the most amazing things about learning, how that learning that we have, when we have it and it's wrong, we'll hang on to it, to the very, very bitter end. Um, and that's why you see what you see, and I don't mean to get on to the politics, but it's what you see when you see with people who have very strong opinions about someone that they either have voted for or someone that they support. No matter how much you can show them that would say that, this is not a good choice. It's a really interesting phenomenon. Now, let's show you this little cartoon. I asked my catering students to take everything with a grain of salt. 
And with my plastering students, I lay it on with a trowel. So it's a really bad cartoon and I need to get it changed. Basically what it's saying there is she's matching up the pedagogy to the individuals that she's teaching. Now comes the part that Shulman had no idea about, and that's technology. So when we look at this with the technology, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at what impact the technology may, underline, 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 have on that interaction between content and pedagogy. Is it bringing anything to the table that enhances those interactions of pedagogy content? That is the fundamental question that we have to struggle with. We think that technology is the thing that's going to change everything in the classroom. It's not so. If it does not interact with these other two bodies, the content and the pedagogy, it's just an add-on that really doesn't do very much. So let's go ahead and look at a comparison chart between PCK and TCK. So if we have in PC an overarching conception of what it means to teach particular content knowledge, in other words, you know what you're doing. This in the TPAC world is, you know what you're doing, but you also know how to integrate technology. And so you go down through here, knowledge of students understanding, thinking, and learning particular subject matter topics, knowledge of students understanding, thinking, and learning particular subject matter topics with technology. Now, one of the things that I think that, that we need to realize is when, when they talk this over here about with technology, integrating technology, and using with appropriate technologies, I, I hearken back to our old friend from 585, good old Michael Fullen, in his book, Stratosphere, and his other books, Deeper Knowledge, or Deeper Learning, excuse me, and Change Theory, his ideas about how we affect change in schools. And one of the things that, that Dr. Fullen talks about is specifically with technology use in classrooms is something he calls the skinny. So the skinny is a deliberate uh, process that teacher, good teachers go through to help students understand the various technologies that could be employed in that classroom. And they do that through very specific isolated instances of using technology, acknowledging we're now going to use this specific technology, Google Slides, to help you have a way to do demonstrations of your understanding of content. Now that is done so that kids understand sort of the ins and outs and how to's of the particular piece of technology. That then becomes a part of the skinny, as Fullen would describe it. And that skinny then becomes classroom knowledge, school knowledge, I call it, where kids basically, when the teacher puts out a activity or suggests that they create the activity in a true understanding by design classroom, then what we would see is they would then turn to the various pieces of technology that they have the understandings about, and then they would employ them. I won't do this one. I mean, it's it's been beaten to death. <laughs> um, this whole idea about, you know, we have problems. Yes, we know we have problems. So is it impossible to do? Is integrating technology into teaching, is it truly a wicked problem? Well, it is. But wicked problems require creative solutions. And if we could see that creative solutions can be viewed as creativity is seen as novelty and novelty must be joined to purpose, then what we have is we have something that uh, Kohler and 
Punya call new. So they see the process of looking at solutions to the TPAC wicked problem as new. And so you can see here that I've got a little word cloud about what does novel mean? This is the first part of the acronym. And it's, you know, astonishing, pioneering, radical, unique. In other words, it's something that you're doing, you're using that's different. Then when we look at effective, and this is the one that somehow we keep dropping out. We're looking at how are we using this interplay of technology with content and pedagogy, and is it doing anything effective and new? So are we just trading in poster board, markers, glue, and scissors for a Google slide presentation? What is different? What is effective? What is more effective about using the technology than what we've used before. And then the whole, the gestalt. Does this whole thing, when it gets put together, does it truly represent something new? Does it truly reflect a different way of looking at the instruction going on in the classroom? Or to borrow from the SAMR model, and I keep talking about SAMR and I don't really mean to, but that substitution, augmentation, modification, redefinition, are we just doing a substitution? Are we just saying we're going to use this instead of that, that we've always used? I'm going to jump through here because these are examples. And oh, let me let me go back and do this one. Tweaking the knobs. So when Kohler and Punya talk about tweaking the knobs. What they're talking about is affordances, and affordance is something that you use to do something else. You step on the brakes to stop the car. They're talking about affordances that teachers create through playful interaction with their curriculum. Now, whenever I do presentations on TPAC, this is the slide that I sit on for a second, because I think this is where we goof. Um, when I say we, I mean uh, people at district level goof because they do not allow teachers the time, the space to have playful interaction with their curriculum using technology. It's usually we drag them in, we tell them use this, um, and this is how we'll expect it to be used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is not tweaking the knobs. That is basically showing people how to use a tool and saying every time you need to put a nail into a wall, go over here and pick up the hammer and bring it over and hit it on the nail. It doesn't allow for any interaction with the tool to understand the other uses that you might have for it, which feeds back to, if you think about it, Shulman's work on content and pedagogy. He argued that teachers should have the understandings of differing pedagogies to then make decisions about the proper way, the best way to teach their content. I would argue that this is what the guys are saying about tweaking the knobs. If we don't have the ability to play with the various pieces of technology that are available to us in classrooms today, if we don't have an understanding of how to operate a Chromebook computer, how are we going to expect teachers to manage 30 of them or 25 of them in a classroom full of kids doing all kinds of stupid things on them? We have to have, and we can't just say, well, they'll pick it up. The other, They'll pick it up. I sat in a meeting yesterday uh, with a group of uh, professors, and one of the professors was complaining about how she was developing an online course and she wasn't getting any support. She was just told, oh, you'll figure it out. Well, that's, that's not the way to do it. You, we can't just say, well, you'll figure it out. We have to provide opportunities for people to see 
to play with, and then to develop their ideas. All right, let me jump on down through here. That was the podcast knob. Here we go. So when we look at how all this stuff kind of fits, let's take that kind of, you know, circle model, which is used, by the way, for just about everything. Those of you who are doing any kind of research, you've bumped into that model all over the place. But when you look at it, let's look at how the different areas are identified within the model. So when we talk about content knowledge, it's the knowledge about the subject being taught. When we talk about technology content knowledge, we're talking about the knowledge of how technology and content are reciprocally related. So how would I use something like a Google Slides when I'm asking kids to do demonstrations of understanding? That's simple as that. When we talk about pedagogical knowledge, what do we know about the processes, practices, and methods of teaching? Do we understand how that works? Do we understand when to plug in one over the other, or are we just stuck with one? The technology knowledge I already just talked about. That is, how do you know? What do you know about how things work? In other words, if I set a computer down in front of you, and I asked you to show me how to create a presentation using any tool. I think it's the other thing we make a big mistake about is, and one of the things I did this summer in teaching a class that I had um, is that I literally went through in every module, I had at least three different ways that the students could do the uh, assignment. Uh, they all were technology related. They all used a piece of technology to do it. But one of the things that I was told at the end of the class was how much they appreciated that ability or that um, that chance to make decisions about what they were going to use. And, uh, you know, I, I know I should do it in all my courses. That was sort of a trial run. And in this course, it's like, well, Steve, you're not doing it here. Well, yes, you're right. And the reason what I try to do with these kinds of courses is I try to keep the distractions, if you will, <laughs> down. But also when we're looking at various tools, I try to give you the tool that, that I have played with. In other words, like for this particular module, you're gonna be using an infographic tool. In the past, we've always used something called pick the chart. This time we're gonna try something called VizMe. I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. But it's when I try to do this for you all, I'm trying to give you what I consider to be the tool that does the best job for right now. I'm always, always appreciative of students who come to me and say, well, I use this in my teaching. Uh, Pear Deck, you know, jumps to mind right away. Lots and lots of folks out there love Pear Decks, and I have no problem with that. Under pedagogical technological knowledge, it's an understanding of what technology can support what pedagogy. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you all the time? We'll come back to it. Here are the different pedagogies that are applicable. And then when we get in here, here's where it all comes together. This is the thoughtful interweaving of all the three sources of knowledge. This is one of the things that drives people crazy about TPAC, frankly, is the guys don't really have any hard and fast lines of delineation. And when people who try to do research about TPAC, one of the things that they find is, and this is why I put this model in here, one of the things that they find about this is, is you really can't get your hands around all of this you have to pick one of these boxes to decide which aspect of the T-Pack you're going to research. That's just sort of a heads up. So when we look at this simple question, what are the new technologies? First step, what are the new technologies? 
have we become proficient in the use of things like Google Classroom and the G Suite for that matter and the G in the uh, Google Drive because all three of those taken together are what form what form the T pack for that particular use let's let's sit on that for a second so when we think about a technology like the Google world, I'll call it, we can see that it can come into play very easily with the content that we teach. And when we think about how that can be done, we can have things in our Google Drive. In fact, when I teach Google Classroom, the thing I teach first is Google Drive because that's the closet. That's the filing cabinet. That's the place where you have all your stuff. Otherwise, your Google Classroom just becomes this disorganized pile of mess. So the Google Drive. So this is where we put in all the stuff that has to do with our content teaching. Now, the use then of that to put over into the classroom where we create the topics or we create the materials is then how we are going to promote the different pedagogies. So if I create a lesson um, inside a Google Classroom where I say, create a demonstration of your understanding about the following that we have been studying in class. The interactions between the three branches of government in the United States. You may use the following tools. Click, 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 click. Okay. In other words, that following tools might look like an infographic that you could create using a uh, pick to chart or Visme. It may look like a Google Slides. It may look like a little video that you create using We Video. So you can see there that my pedagogy is I'm asking kids to do constructivist knowledge demonstrations, constructivist learning taking your prior knowledge, adding the new knowledge that you've learned in our class and creating a whole new knowledge. Very similar to the scientific method, by the way. I have a theory. Uh, this is my theory. Um, this is how I'm going to test the theory. I tested the theory and this is what happened. Um, I can continue on or I may have to go back and create a new theory. You know, same thing. But so what we're looking at here is you have a strong background in the use of all of these technologies that kids will use. But more importantly, more importantly, you have taught the skinny. You have taught them in isolation or embedded either way. You've taught them how to use these technologies so that when the part that shows up in your Google Classroom that is the part that is the assignment, you then have a materials area that is loaded up with the links, maybe a how-to video or two about how to use this stuff. Or maybe if the student is more comfortable with reading, you know, differentiation, then you've got all that there. Let's see what else I've got here in this PowerPoint. When we think about the pedagogical approaches, this is where, again, you get that idea of when you're putting together that assignment inside the Google Classroom or anything for that matter, how are you going to approach that assignment pedagogically? Are you gonna to say to kids, you're working on your own, you know, the direct approach, good luck. <laughs> Are you going to allow them to work in a collaborative fashion in a group where you're stressing that there has to be a final product that represents the best thinking of everyone in the group? Are you going to use a constructivist approach where you basically are asking people to not only demonstrate their new knowledge, but demonstrate their reflections upon this is where I got it from. 
looking back, this is what we talked about two weeks ago. I see how it fits now. And this is how what I need to know going forward. I need to know this about my new knowledge going forward so that I can carry it forward and realize that it has uh, implications for new learning. So we see that the pedagogical approaches help you frame what kids would do with the technology in your classroom. Now, understand, it can be the same technology for all the different pedagogies. You know, it doesn't have to be a different piece of technology for every different pedagogy you might use out there. That gets a little nutty after a while. But the point is, you have such powerful tools now, and you have so many to choose from, that A, you can come up with a tool set that you can give kids that they then can utilize in demonstrations of their understanding within the pedagogy that you have identified they're going to use. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. And I'm going to go here and finish up here. So these are the TPAC stages. And boy, do I know these. This was my job in Jefferson County Public Schools. Didn't even know TPAC back then. <laughs> and when I finally got around to learning TPAC, it was like, oh my God, this is what I was doing and I was doing it all wrong and so on and so on. So if you think about the progression here, starting down here on the lower left, the teachers are able to use technology and understand how it could be used for subject matter. Do not yet integrate it. What is that? Well, that's your professional development session. That's your people sitting in a room in front of their laptops or in front of desktop computers, learning how to use the Google Classroom, learning how to use a Google Drive. But they don't yet use it. The next one is the part that is, in my humble opinion, the part of the TPAC process that everything hinges on. So this is where teachers form either a favorable, unfavorable attitude toward using the technology for teaching and learning subject matter. This is where the rubber should meet the road, but a lot of times what it is, is it just is the running into the brick wall. Seen it too many times. This is where we do not allow teachers the opportunity, the freedom to ask questions, fail, put it back together, come up with a better model that they then can use. We either just kind of just ignore them and say, well, okay, well, you know, she'll never get it. He lives in the cave. All he sees are the shadows. Boy, extra point for those of you who can identify what philosophical uh, analogy that represents. If you're dealing with a group of cave dwellers, you know, they're not ever going to come out. It's just not in their nature. But, but if you can show and if you have the patience that there is a upside to the organizational power, to the instructional power, to the creativeness that you can tap into with your students with technology and get that person to a comfort level with that technology. And I don't just mean, you know, when you turn it on, it turns on. What do you do when it blows up? You know, which is the part that, that drives so many people crazy. This is the part that we either grab somebody, they recognize the knowledge they need to have, they accept that knowledge, and then they move on to trying it out in their classroom. And then we all just hold our breath in hopes that everything works that day, that the internet does not go down, 
that the projector bulb does not burn out, that Johnny doesn't throw up, you know, all those things that we know can go on. And finally, if all this works, we get to the point where teachers can make revisions in their curriculum because they've had the ability to have that playful interaction. They've been blessed with the fact that they've got kids in the classroom who are more than willing to jump on this journey with them, which I find is pretty much the case. I've seen very creative teachers who have just literally turned to their students and said, well, what do you think we ought to do? And they're just dying and ready for that question. Now, you can't do that without them having any kind of understanding of what the technology might be in your classroom. But if kids understand the basic tool set, it's amazing the ideas they can come up with. There you go. That was TPAC, my friends. Let me jump back into here. Let's look at lesson planning using TPAC. You're going to choose learning goals that are most connected to students. Of course, that would be your uh, standards. You're going to make some pedagogical decisions, and you must make pedagogical decisions. You must make pedagogical decisions. Now, this, this particular thing has a link here that will take you to the eight pedagogical continua. Let me, let me go ahead and show it to you. The problem with this is, and as I said, I'm not going to stay here very long because you need to see it. and I can't show it to you. You'll need to click that link and go visit it. But here's the thing. There is many pedagogies out there is, well, I won't say stars in the heaven, but there are quite a bit of pedagogical decisions to be made. The point is, when you're really truly being TPAC, you're making those pedagogical decisions because here it comes the most important thing to realize the T in TPAC goes last. Number one and number two are what you do first. Then, after you've made that content choice, after you've made that pedagogical choice, then you start looking at the activity types, assessment, and hello, way over here to the right, number five, is selecting the tools and the resources. Technology is not first, unless you're teaching a technological class. If you're teaching somebody how to uh, create graphics in Photoshop, well, yeah, duh, it's the first thing. If you're trying to teach kids quadratic equations, it's the last thing. And, you know, that might be something like how to use Desmos. Simple as that. Again, what we're trying to get at here is, and Tim does a much better job of this in TPAC, frankly. You know, when you watch that video, you'll see what I mean. When you, when you think about this, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to say that this intersection of this content and this pedagogy and this technology has very much a place in our classroom instruction if, if we understand the technology and we understand how kids could use that technology. Okay? All right, so let me, hear. as I said, if you want to hear everything from the very beginning, here it all is. Thanks, Glenn, uh, for this wonderful introduction. And uh, generally... It's very echo echoey. Uh, you know, obviously, they were just recording while he was talking, and they were picking up the sound through the speakers. So it's not the best, to be quite honest. But here he is. This is quite good. Um, once I'm they... here with Dr. Punya Mishra. He is a professor of educational psychology and educational 
Technology at the College of Education at Michigan. And one of the things I like about this is that um, he does a very nice job here of taking what he says in that 45 minute presentation back there and putting it into context in just 13 minutes. So if you want to hear it uh, from the mouth of the man, here it is. I will tell you, it's very similar to what I just told you. <laughs> now, let's get to how we're going to do this. What is going to be your way of demonstrating your understanding of all of this? So let's go back to the module and let's look what Steve has on here for us to do. He's asking that you go in and choose a video lesson from our TPAC Tim CEHD wiki, which is located at a PB Works. Um, and then I want you to do one that you would use the TPAC observation instrument. We'll take a look at that here in just a sec. You're going to basically watch it and then you're going to score it on the instrument. Now, I've already been asked by some folks about do we have to find what Steve considers the best video? No. First of all, you should never do anything trying to think what does Steve think. That's a scary place to go. What you ought to be doing is looking at it and thinking about what we've just done. Do we see strong content instruction, varying pedagogies, technology? Or do we see strong content instruction, one pedagogy with technology? Use. Or do you see weak content instruction and it all just falls apart because you can't you can't you can't rescue weak content instruction it just it just doesn't work you know you could have all the technology in the world i've seen it i've been in classrooms where every single piece of technology that the district had bought for teachers was front and center and i've seen people who couldn't teach their way out of a paper bag um who basically had kids sitting on iPads, they were using smart boards, et cetera, et cetera, and they were teaching the wrong thing. You're gonna do the same thing with Tim, and that'll be in the next video. Uh, you're gonna build an infographic using VisMe. Let me take you to the VisMe and show you how it works, and then we'll, no, let me, let me go ahead and take you to the works thing. Uh, sorry about that. Just click on the link. Here we are. So this is where all the videos live that you're going to be using as your resource. Now, I've also been asked by some folks um, if they have a video of their own, could they use it as a as their T pack? Exactly. Of course. Please. Uh, I've had some folks in the past have used their KTIP videos. Uh, those of you who have done KTIP, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So they actually used their KTIP video and then they did TPAC and Tim on it, which I, I find very courageous, frankly. All the way at the bottom of the homepage on our wiki is this right here. It's also locate, located over here on the right hand side in our structure right there under the navigator tab. But if you click here, this will take you to lots of different examples of technology use in classrooms. Some of these are fairly old. Uh, some of these are rather obscure. In other words, you're not gonna see technology front and center smack you upside the head. And that's okay, because we that's what we want to see. As you can see, some of these are K-TIP videos. I really was trying to find uh, K-TIP videos that had technology in them. Now, to the other question that I've been asked. Question number one was, can I use my own video? Yep. If you got one you found somewhere and you want to show it off, you are right ahead. Does the video have to show TPAC at its best, at its greatest implementation? No. If you can find a video that doesn't do a very good job, in other words, a negative, you go right ahead and use that one because that's the whole point of this exercise. It's for you to have a comfort level that when you see a video 
you can then look at it through this new lenses that we've given you called TPAC. So let me show you how to then do the assignment. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to watch this particular video. And he's not talking because, oh, I turned my volume down on the speaker. Sorry. Several of them had he's a lot talking. of trouble reading it because of the lines. They were in between numbers. They weren't sure what those numbers meant. I had this Good setup here. I, I like this video because he does a nice job of, of demonstrating to you that his understanding of content helps him understand where the kids are struggling. Now, if you're going to use this one, go ahead and watch it and then use the con the TPAC observation instrument to basically grade him. Now, to do the assignment, you're going to want to click on the YouTube link here because you're going to want to go and get this. Okay, so you're going to get that because when you get that, then that allows you to come back here and do the assignment, which is located there at the beginning. It says you're going to use the TPAC observation instrument. Well, where is that, Steve? Well, that's in your assignments. So go to assignments, come down here, and here it is. This is the one you'll use for Tim as well. So you're going to open that up. It's going to download it to your computer. You're now going to go in here. And you're going to work within the word. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to put that link in. Then you go down here and you can have this open while you're watching the video over here. Jump back and forth. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at. So when we look at how curricular goals and technologies matching technology to the curriculum. Is the technology used in the lesson strongly aligned with one or more curricular goals? If it is, you're going to highlight it and you're going to bold it. Okay. Then you come down to instructional strategies and technologies. Technologies uses optimally supports instructional strategies. In other words, it, it helps with the pedagogy. And you're going to give it another one, another four, perhaps. Do the same thing. You're going to go down and do this. For all the different levels, the identified areas of the TPAC module. Okay. You're going to do the same thing for the TIM. Now, here is where you're going to create the VISME. And let's go back and look at that. So what is VISME? So VISME is nothing more than a pretty substantial program that allows you to create uh, all kinds of cool things. Um, I have an account here, but I'm not sure if it's paid. I would recommend you get your own account, start your free account. It allows you to have three free uh, VISME products, which is nice because it has lots of different products. And you can have five of those, but the good news is everything's available to you. It's not like they, like in picture charts where you can only use the uh, really nice uh, templates if you had a paid account. This will let you have everything with a trial. And when your trial ends, it doesn't kill your, your stuff. It just won't let you make anymore. So when I log in, this is what I see. Okay, I'm going to go over here and click on the create button on the left hand side and we're doing infographics. But notice the other things that it'll let you do. This is kind of like what I want, why I'm using this these days. This one especially right here, web graphics. There's some really nice tools in here that you can play with. We're doing infographics. This is the other reason why Steve likes it so much. Once I have decided on what it is that I'm going to make, I can come in and type in a search word. And if I spelled it right, it will take me, it will take me to examples 
of comparisons. So in the assignment, Steve is asking you to develop an infographic that demonstrates the interweaving, the interconnectedness, and the parts that do not connect of TPAC and TIM. And the way you do that is you look through here and you can either find one that you want to use. And by the way, you can use, you can start your own. You don't have to use one of these. Uh, I like having the, temp, the, the templates because it really helps me sort of visualize what I want to do. Because I know that once I have the thing that I want to do, then I know what I've got. And I, and I know what I can do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one because it has this nice tree structure. Okay. And I can come in here. And if you've ever done a PowerPoint, well, you're home free. You know how to use this. So I could come in here and wipe this out and I could go T-P-A-C-K versus Tim. And I can come in now and I can do all the, all these boxes are, are customizable. I could leave that one right where it is. How do they compare? Okay. And I can come right down the list here and start talking about, instead of having these little uh, boxes with these little cute pictures and everything, I might go in here and we type in here using a text box, something like, um, content. And I'm going to have to make that a little bit smaller, aren't I, to get it to go in here. But then I'm going to drag it up into here. I'm going to make the box a little bit smaller. I might have to change my font a little bit so it's not so ginormous. Play with it a little bit so I can get it to the size that I want it to be. And then again, I can drag it around to it where it fits. Okay, so then I could go in here and I could do the differentiation between, so how does TPAC and how does Tim view content? Um, might want to come up here and clean this up a little bit, you know, so they're the same font sizes. Come in here, this one looks to be about a 36. Yeah, okay, you get it. Now, when you're finished, make sure, I should have done this the first thing right off the bat. Go up here where it says Untitled Project, type in your name. Come over here to where it says Share. You're going to publish this to the web. When you do that, you click on the button here that says Publish to the Web. That's all you got to do. And then here's where it is. Now, you can either copy that link, or if you're the kind of person who worries about everything, go ahead and view it. By the way, that's me. And you'll come out here, and there it is, it, how it will look on the web. Then you can copy that link, and then you go into the assignment, and at the bottom of the assignment is where, um, well, here, let me pull it up. Let's pull up the assignment, and down here at the bottom of the assignment, it says, build an infographic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Put your link there. Save it, upload it back into the assignment, you're done. So, there will be no class come sep Tuesday, September 3rd, uh, synchronous class. This, I've got both uh, sections, the TPAC and the TIM are now uh, completed. TPAC's already, uh, the TIM's already in there. I'll wait a little bit for the TPAC to finish cooking and then I'll put it up. So you'll have both, both parts of module two available to you by easily tomorrow. If you have any questions, any concerns, if anything I've done here is confusing to you and you need clarification, you know how to do it. 
you text me at 502-457-2937. I will n we'll have technology with me at all times over the next uh, seven days. So it's not like I'm totally dropping off the face of the earth. You can reach me. And if you need to reach me, do not hesitate one second to do just that. I'm always here for you. I hope you're realizing that we have completed now two modules. And the next one that we're going to land on is the meat, the heart of the course, understanding by design. We'll be sitting here for a good two or three class sessions because once we understand understanding by design and once we understand how to do the understanding by design lesson plan, then we are pretty much heading into our final and all we have to do is universal design for learning and we'll be done. So, as I said, any questions, concerns, you know how to reach me. Thank you all, as always.